are in the middle of our Lenten season. And last week was the big, ki the big kickoff. We have sermon because we're talking about sin. We get to talk about my favorite subject for the next couple of weeks because I have experience in it. I have, believe it or not, sinned. And I continue to sin. And yet God forgives me and empowers me to continue to do the work of the ministry of the church. And as I mentioned last week, you're all sinners too. Welcome to the club. The good news is that God knows that we are sinful. That we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And it is because of that sinfulness that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save us and to reconcile us to his father. The sin is good news because the blood of Jesus washes away the guilt and the punishment and the penalty of our sin. During Lent, we are bidden to look at the ways in which our sinfulness prevents us from hearing clearly God's call to us to follow Him, and how that sin keeps us from cooperating with His grace and hearing that prompting of the Holy Spirit to actually live lives as He would have us live. We need to repent. We need to turn around from our sinfulness and have true contrition, sorrow for that sin, asking God to help us to reform our lives and live as He would have us live. That's our challenge as members of the body of Christ. This week we hear a gospel lesson, which I think on first hearing makes us sound, makes Jesus sound, well, almost callous and cruel. We hear this story about a woman who has a child who has a demon. And when this woman, who is not a Jew, so therefore she's not a member of the original covenant with God's people, of God's people, she's a Canaanite, she's a Gentile, she's one of them on the outside. And I think, I don't know everybody here, I've had a couple people who are fulfilled Jews in the congregation, those who were raised Jewish and have come to know that the Messiah has come in Jesus. But I think all the rest of us are Gentiles. This woman is one of us. And yet, when, comes, when she comes to Jesus, when she asks Jesus for help because she has a daughter who has a demon, Jesus' reaction is that he's come for the children of Israel to claim the laws. That is his mission. That is Jesus' primary mission while he is on earth. Now, don't get it wrong. It's not like we are going to be excluded forever. And in fact, Jesus says in his teaching that in many of the parables, that those on the outside in fulfillment of God's prophecies will be included. And thank God for that. We have been included. But in this particular instance, Jesus sets up this teaching opportunity by saying, I have come for the lost sheep of Israel. I have come for God's children. And then he seems to almost give her a slap. You know, you don't take bread from the children and throw it to the dogs. Now, I'm sorry, but I think he could have been polite. But the good news is that God didn't ask him first. He's making a point. And, and who knows, maybe in the Aramaic or in the Greek it has a whole stronger meaning and it's a colloquialism, like saying, hey, you dope, get off that bench, right? But maybe that's what it meant. But it's the woman's reaction that becomes that wonderful teaching opportunity and an opportunity for us today, right here. Here's a woman who is outside the original covenant with God. She is one of those people. And yet, having heard about Jesus and his ability to heal and to make whole, what does she do? She comes to Jesus. She intercedes to Jesus. She petitions him. She worships him. 
That's a very surprising phrase in this gospel lesson. She falls down and she worships him. And she's persistent. The disciples are like, tell her to go away. She's bothering us. She keeps following us and crying out, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's really annoying. And yet she's persistent. She has faith. She has persistence. And she's got a wonderful priority in recognizing Jesus and worshiping him. That's what people of faith and persistence do. By the way, that's what we're doing here today. But there's something else that she does that is our very hard Lenten challenge this morning. I hope that we're people of faith. And quite frankly, it may be you can say, I guess I have faith. And somewhere in your mind, you're like that fellow in the gospel who says, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. for herself, but for her child. 